Hello everyone, uh, today we're going to discuss with you about the answer technique for AP Computer Science exams. In this video, we will try to answer question 17 to question 20. Uh, let's see the first. Refer to the do something method. There are several post condition. That is, uh, for this do something method, it's a public static, and also it does not return anything. Its input has uh, three parameters. The first one is an array list of some type, and uh, we call this array list list. The second input is integer i. The third input is integer j. And uh, the content of this do something method is as follows. Some type type which is called a temp is equals to list that get i and then later on we do list that set of index i with list that get of index j the third step we do list that set of index j with the content of temp so we just use the temporary variables to store the, uh, the original content of uh, index j then we assign index j with uh, the content of index j and uh, we assign index j back to the original temporary storage value of uh, the content of index j. What does that mean? That means uh, with the help of this uh, temporary variable called temp, we can do some exchange of the content with index j i and uh, the content of index j inside of this list. So which best describes the post condition for do something method? A, B, C, D, let's see the choices. A, removes from list the object index at i and j. That is incorrect. Uh, we can still see that they're still there after three lines of execution. B, replaces in list the object index i with the object index at j. Uh, this is just half of the answer. And also C, it is easy to observe that this is also half of the answer. D is uh, replaced uh, in list the object index at i and j with temp. That is incorrect. For example, the index i will have the value of the original content of the index j, and the index j will have the value of the original content of the index i. So that means the choice E interchanges in list the objects indexed at i and j is the best description of the post condition for do something. So the answer is E. Let's see question 18. Consider the negative real class below which defines a negative real number object. It has a private uh, variable with type double called my neg real. And uh, there's a constructor creates a negative real object whose value is num, and the product precondition is that num, which is less than zero, which is negative number. Uh, okay, let's see what's the condition, what's the content of the constructor. For the constructor of a negative real uh, with input double none, we does not show anything related to the implementation. <laughs> so which means it just depends. Uh, what are the two post conditions? We returns the, the first post condition with the get value. It returns the value of this negative real. And also the implementation is not shown here, but it must be somewhere. The second post condition is returns this negative real rounded to the nearest integer. So what does that, what does that mean? Is a get rounded and return with a type integer because originally it has uh, value of type double, after the round it has type, oh, uh, value of type integer. Okay, here are some rounding example. What is uh, the, when the negative real number is minus 3.4, it is rounded to the nearest integer minus 4. Well, if uh, it is the negative real number minus 8.97, it is rounded to the nearest integer minus 9, so it's rounded down. If uh, the original negative real number is minus 5.0 actually is an integer, but we just uh, use a double value, it will directly round it to the nearest integer, minus 5. So it just rounded to the nearest integer. It can't 
be rounded down or rounded up. So if it is a minus 2.487, it will be rounded to minus 2. If it's minus 0 0.2, it will be rounded to 0. So which implementation of get rounded produces uh, the desired post condition? Okay, that will be. Let's see what happens for a return get value minus 0 0.5, then converted it to the integer. It seems like it has worked for all cases. So the answer is A. Okay, let's see question 19. Consider the following method. Public static void, what, what's it with in, input integer n? So if n is greater than 10, then we do some recursion of what is it, uh, what's it of n divided by 10. Then we do something system that out that print of n modular 10. So we will be output as a result of the method called what it 347. Okay, let's see if n is greater than 10. Then originally n is equal to 347, so which means the n is greater than 10. Uh, then it will recursively code itself with uh, what is it of 347 divided by 10, which means it will call recursively call what is it of 34. Then uh, instead of this what is it, uh, what is it of uh, 34, it will call what's it of 3. Then we do something like 3 modulo 10. So which means uh, at least uh, it will first print out 3 because what's it of 3. Then when we consider the what's it of uh, 34, it will output of the value of 4 because 34 modular 10 is 4. Now the last one is uh, back to the original recursion call. Uh, 347. It will print out the 347 modular 10. That will be 7. So definitely, what does that mean? That means it will gradually print out uh, for the input 347, it will gradually print out 3, then print out 4, then print out 7. So the output should be 3, 4, 7. Just the original value. Okay, let's see the question 20. A large list of numbers is to be sorted into ascending order, assuming that a data movement is a swap or reassignment of an element, which of the following is a true statement. Okay, A, if uh, the array is initially sorted in a descending order, then insertion sort will be more efficient than selection sort. B, the number of uh, comparisons for selection sort is independent of the initial arrangement of elements. C, the number of comparisons for insertion sort is independent of the initial arrangement of elements. Uh, we know that B and C definitely should not be true. Okay, uh, T, the number of data movement in selection sort depends on the initial arrangement of elements. Yes, E, the number of data movements in insertion sort is independent of the initial arrangement of elements. Uh, obviously, E, B, C, they are not right because um, uh, there are different uh, selection rules for the insertion sort and selection sort. Okay, let's see uh, if uh, the choice A is right or not. I mean, we know that the D should be correct, but let's see A. If array is initially sorted in a descending order, the insertion sort will be more efficient than the selection sort. 
Uh, the selection so that first we selected the, the smallest uh, variable, so which means that it was scanned through the from the starting of uh, the arrangement, uh, the first element onto the last one, and so on. It will choose the uh, the last to uh, next to the last element, and so on. So at the beginning, it will scan n times. The second step, it will scan n minus one times. Third step, it will scan n minus two times, and so on. If uh, the array is initially sorted in a descending order, and it will do some, uh, it will do some swap. But how about the insertion sort? Insertion sort first, it will try to insert the uh, element of index zero with the smallest one. So it will, at the beginning, uh, compare the first element with the second element and then replace the, the second element with the first element. The, uh, sorry, uh, it will, uh, uh, they will temporarily keep the, the value of the second element. Then it goes to the third element, it will keep uh, the value of the third element and so on until it reaches the last element found is the smallest one and they do some exchange with it. So what does that mean? That means uh, for this case, if the array is initially sorted in a descending order, the insertion sort and uh, the selection sort, uh, they almost do similar behavior. So which means that the choice of A is incorrect because uh, the insertion sort will not be more efficient than the selection sort. Okay, so the answer is D. Thanks for listening and uh, hopefully uh, you can join with us. Okay, bye.